Gentlemen, congratulations for this documentary, The Penny Black. It it come it comes off like a like some kind of mystery movie <laughs> right right off the bat. Thank you. Yeah, I mean it was uh, it, it was it was even more mysterious filming it. I think for probably both myself and uh, Alex, the other filmmaker, and Will separately and together. Sure. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So, uh, so Joe, let's start off with you first. What what sparked you to make this documentary? What actually just to you know kind of say, you know what, I need to need to put this all in film. And you you made that decision fairly quickly. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I am a documentary filmmaker and I had done a couple of movies and uh, worked in nonfiction and TV for a while. So, uh, and I had just finished another documentary. Um, and so my, you know, my sensors were up looking for the next thing. And um, I think it was, it was like a brunch, right, Will? Uh, it was like, Alex is a friend of a friend. My producer is a friend of a friend of Will's. And um, we all met for brunch and I knew Will a little bit, but not very well. And um, a couple other guys at the table, I didn't know. And we were all talking about what we did that weekend. And Will brings up this crazy story about uh, his neighbor giving him this really expensive collection of stamps and then went out of town. And that immediately was extremely intriguing. Um, at the time we thought he was gonna come back in a week. And uh, I just asked Will if I could come over with my camera and just, you know, video interview Will and like videotape the stamps. And then maybe we'd have this short little, you know, slice of weird LA life, uh, which turned into this like six, seven year odyssey. To be fair, it was still a weird slice of LA life. Yeah. <laughs> well, why, why, Will, why were you so easily convinced to do a documentary? A lot of people, seem to be hesitant, but, uh, but you, you, you seem to uh, wanting to do this. So probably the same reason that I accepted a bag of stamps from my neighbor without knowing him very well. You know, um, I don't know. It's, listen, I, I, um, I, it, it was a fascinating experience. I'm not going to say it was easy the entire time, you know what I mean? But I, very few people, I think, get to take part in something like this. And, and I think even fewer get to actually you know, see something like a whole part of your life, right? Like captured and 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 shown like that, um, which is incredible. I, I I consider myself incredibly lucky to have um, to have known Joe, to have known Alex, to have kind of gone through this process and to have uh, to kind of play a, a small part in it. Now, you you held on to those stamps for a very long time. I I don't I don't know how you actually do it because you're it's it's like a it's like someone actually just like handing you like a duffel bag and say, here's a million dollars. Could you hold on to that? I mean, aren't, aren't you even like, uh, I, obviously you were a little bit paranoid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A dude disappears. You know what I mean? Like it kind of just, it felt like sketchy all around. Um, uh, but it, like, what else is I going to do? I can't like, it's not like that fungible, right? It's not like just a bag of money. And like, I don't, I don't want to get on the wrong side of, of a couple of Russians. <laughs> that's, that's true. We, you, you don't even know what kind of Russians that you, you were dealing with at the time. No right? idea. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, when you were uh, filming this uh, documentary, obviously you were, you were planning to uh, film it just for a couple weeks or maybe a little bit longer. How, how did you basically uh, um, plan to an extended year years of uh, of documentary filmmaking on this? Yeah, I mean, it, it, the, that was a constant question. Really, is should we keep going? And you know, Alex and I um, had that conversation a lot because I think there might have been a, even a year or more at a time where we didn't do anything. Like there, there, it, it was like uh, you know, stops and, and spurts. So every once in a while we would shoot a lot. And then, and that would usually be when some new piece of evidence or some new clue or some, um, some new plot twist happened and we wanted to get as much coverage of it as we could. And then that maybe ran into a dead end. And so we were like, oh, well, you know, maybe we don't, maybe we don't have anything here. And, you know, we all have day jobs so we're all doing other things at the same time. And inevitably something would happen that would just draw us all back in. And I know like we were all at varying degrees of excited about that. I know Will sometimes <laughs> wasn't too excited to jump back in and, and start filming again, but, um, but he, he always did. And, you know, it was, I, we always appreciated that. 
Well, it seems it seems like uh, in in your own way, you 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 had this certain adventure, uh, you know, basically holding on to millions of dollars in stamps or trying to find out, uh, track down this uh, Ru Russian neighbor, or even trying to you know trying to figure out this crime. Um, is is this is this sort of like your your sense of like uh, being being in almost like being in a movie yourself, like? You, you all you wanted to be part of all this world I, I want to be part of this world um so I, I I not specifically I guess um I I I don't know that's that that's a tough one to answer uh, I I do think again it was something I, I very interesting and very intriguing. Uh, in that way, it's like a movie, I suppose. Um, I, I also got to see the other side of the nuts and bolts of how you actually kind of construct a movie around a documentary. And it turns out it's not quite as exciting as like what you actually see on the screen at the end. Fantastic product, but you know what I mean? Like like uh, uh, Joe said, a lot of kind of starts and stops and you know, uh, your, your day job kind of gets in the way and what have you. Um, but listen, I, I was in a movie, so I mean, yeah, it's it's close, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I also think um, it is hard to. I mean, obviously, when you put music and you know you kind of create an atmosphere and a tone in that ninety minutes that you're watching, when you spread that out over six years, you know you you might have fleeting moments of tension and you might have a fleeting moment of being scared, um, and it goes away, you know. But on the screen, it's magnified, so it. It, it plays out like a movie on the screen because it is a movie on the screen. But in life, it was, yeah, it was, I mean, there were moments where, I mean, my heart was racing, you know, like uh, particular when we saw Rowan for the first time, um, you know, when, I, when we confronted Will about the missing stamps, like those were all moments that I was, you know, I was really jazzed up. And I think what Alex and I wanted to do was represent as best we could the feelings that we were having going on this adventure with Will. And, um, and so, but I think there were times, Will, where you were, you did look at this as a little bit of fiction rather than your life. Because I even remember when we were uh, trying to plan your meeting with, with Rowan, you said, uh, I was like, are you comfortable with uh, being, you know, going to Plummer Park or whatever our first plan was? And you were like, you mean when I'm sitting here on my couch now, but this is all some kind of vague, like fictional reality. Sure, I'm comfortable now. But, you know, when you when it becomes real, it, it's a little different. For sure. hundred percent. Like any of the planning phases that we had for any of those things, it was very easy to say yes or no or to be confident. And then and then you start being confronted with that reality of it. And it becomes a lot more um, kind of fight or flight is like, now, like, it's not that, you know what I mean? But like, there was definitely some sort of feeling around that. Also, um, it's super odd to watch this only because like, like it's a movie, it is, it, and it, you know, it's 90 minutes and it's there and it looks great. And like, it's also something that kind of like I went and lived through and like trying to disconnect those two things and like decouple them is totally impossible. And it, it creates this really, really strange. So you have three of them, right? It's like, we were planning it. That was one thought. We did it. That was another thought. And then I see it all put together. And that's like a totally different thing. Um, it, it's one of the more surreal experiences that I've ever had <laughs> going through all three of those. I guess a lot of people don't realize their their lives can be a movie. That's that's for certain. Joe, I you you know um, there there's a lot of moments in this film that uh, you kind of put yourself in there. Most documentary documentarians like to be the fly on the wall. Was it difficult for you to uh, not put yourself in in these situations? Um, for for this movie, it was impossible. Um, just because as we went along, like obviously. Um, it, it was difficult to tell how much truth we were receiving from all parties. So at, at a certain point, Alex and I had to step in because our protagonist, Will, like might, may have been deceiving us. At least we thought that at the time, this could be happening. And there was no other way to tell that side of the story without stepping in. And, uh, and, you know, and, and my voice was kind of always there behind the camera to begin with, because we were, you know, this wasn't a traditionally shot documentary. It wasn't an event happened 
and we sat people down in a well-lit room and, and talked about it. It was moving as we were, you know, we were living it. It was happening as we were going forward. So, um, you know, I would be asking Will questions that were happening at the time or, or, or maybe just happened. And um, that was kind of the way we were shooting. So I was, I was always kind of a part of it. And Alex too, my producer, who um, was just as much of a creative guide on this as I was. And um, he asked Will a lot of questions off camera. And uh, that was just kind of the way we did it. And then, yeah, and then we stepped in a little bit more significantly towards the end. Well, I, I do want to ask you about the, you know, the per perception of deception in, um, of, of yourself in this doc documentary. Because, you know, when I was actually watching it and realized your name was Will Smith, and I said, yeah, that's like, like that's a real name, but obviously, <laughs> <laughs> obviously it is. Um, what, what did you think about, uh, you know, being at, at the time being portrayed with, with a certain deception, talking about your father and all those kind of stuff? And were you annoyed of, with all the questions of the emails from Joe <laughs> after a while? Um, I, I think th there's a lot of things that happened in here during the making of this, right? That are, are uh, confusing and weird and, and rely on my, uh, at, at the best of times, like foggy memories, you know what I mean? And what have you. So I, um, I get it. And there's also, there's the other side too, that like th there were times when I just didn't want to keep having to talk on camera about things, you know? And like, that's, that's uh, uh, that's tough, and I, um, I I commend Joe and I commend Alex for continuing to kind of like push me forward on that, you know. Um, and I listen. I think at the end of the day, I think that they they uh, they put together something that's 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 honest and real, and that's all I can really hope for. Yeah, that that, that is a commendation to you, Joe, for uh, for for putting um, to, together something like this. Um, as, as for the missing book of stamps, I'm, I'm going to go ahead at this, at this point, it's still never found, which, which I, which I completely understand because, uh, I, I, I have albums of, um, stamps from, from what my father actually give it, given me and, uh, and I don't even know where it is, honest, honestly. And, uh, after watching this documentary, I was excited because I, because I was going, Wait, I, I have I have a stamp from you know it's from the eighteen seventies or something, and then I went on the internet and found out it was only a quarter. But uh, what what what's your guys' personal uh, theories on what happened to those stamps? Uh, well, it's really hard to know because I mean um, I think I, I've I've gotten to know Will really well, and I think he. I think you do enjoy uh, creating a certain amount of mystery. And there was, there was a period of time when I thought that because it was the most expensive book, or at least that's the one that Roman said was the most expensive book, um, Will would have taken it to safeguard it. Just like he would have, in my mind, Will, you would have thought, listen, we've got these other stamps. They can shoot with those or do whatever. I'm gonna keep this to myself. At least I know where this is and you know they don't have to bother with it and then when we discovered that it was missing maybe you were playing with us a little bit or uh, maybe there was a period of time when the filming stopped for a long time and you thought this thing's over so I'm gonna do do with this what I what I want to do with it but the th but here's here's the rubbing part because I because I also believe well because Will says and he'll tell you what he thinks in a second but um, I also believe that, that he doesn't know where they are. So I don't know. The thing that always sticks with me is I don't know how all of the, the rest of the collection can remain intact and that one book go missing. Like that's the thing that I can't figure out. But, um, but Will, I'll let you go ahead and give your... Um, I moved like four times between when we started filming this and when it came out. Maybe more. I don't. I've lost track. Honestly, um, I have lost things way more personally valuable to me over the course of those moves. I think than than a book of stamps. You know what I mean? I I, I honestly have no idea that. But 
a, a combination, I think, of my lack of organization and uh, having to shift locations like that that many times is is all I can think about. And what, where are these stamps now? Not the missing book, book but the remainder he gave to Roman. So Roman did take the take the stamps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the, at the end of the movie, um, we we finally find the neighbor, and. Um, there's this kind of very tense climactic scene in which uh, we don't, we still don't know who this guy is and, and will, uh, <laughs> you know, extreme with extreme bravery uh, wore a wire and uh, had various cameras kind of set up around him and uh, went in to meet Roman for the first time in four years, was it? Or three years, something like that. I mean, and, uh, probably longer, but yeah. And, uh, and returned what was left of the collection. Will, do you think uh, that is a legitimate uh, collection with Roman or you just went ahead and just go ahead and assume he is the right one? I'm sorry, what, one more time? I said, do you, do you think that he was a legitimate owner of, uh, of, those, uh, of those stands? Oh, oh, I have, I, I got no idea, man. Possession is nine tenths of the law. I don't know. I mean, um, on, honestly, after after all these years and saying that possession is nine tenths of the law, and you moved four or five times, you could easily disappear with all those stamps. You do realize that? Uh, probably, yeah. But I got a lot of things I like in my life. I don't know. I don't. Those, those stamps have to be worth a fair amount for me to just drop off the face of the earth with them. And what, and what do you what what now what do you think about the, you know stamp collecting today? Um, obviously, I'm I'm going to assume you're you're not into stamp collecting, even though you you went through this entire journey for years. Maybe because I went through this entire journey for years, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, I'm I'm not big into stamp collecting. That being said, like there were times when we'd be like at you know a stamp convention or something like that, right? And you see these guys and they have like little like you know plastic containers, right, with like the individual stamps, and they know so much about like the history of these things. And there's something really fascinating about that. Like I think it's really cool in the same way that um, I have an uncle who collects uh, uh, like pre Civil War knives, you know, um, another kind of like archaic niche sort of thing that like you know it's not a huge number of people doing, but like I, it's fascinating that level of dedication right towards collecting something like that and towards collecting something that has that kind of historic value and story behind it um so i i i love it i could definitely see myself if i had a lot more free time getting into something like stamp collecting but it has never clicked even with this kind of access and story excellent joe one last question obviously you couldn't fit everything into the documentary uh talk, talk about uh, putting some tidbits into a into your website as a as a teaser for us to continue this journey uh you mean like deleted scenes that i wasn't able to put in yeah uh, i mean there's so many you know i think we shot over a thousand hours of footage for this thing in total and i mean the the thing that first comes to mind is we did a we contacted the the um this officer lieutenant zaradine of the glendale police department who was a uh, he was the he ran a task force that took down the Armenian mafia in I don't know the mid two thousands, and um, we met with him to to talk to him about Roman. Will met with him to talk to him about Roman to see if Roman fit the profile of you know a, a Armenian gangster or a Russian you know, Russian mob mobster, and uh, that was I think we were pretty terrified by the response. That was horrifying. Yeah, yeah, that really like that definitely colored the next like three interactions that we had of trying to, you know, stake out his house. Yeah, the, the, the police officer, Lieutenant Zaradine basically said he's, he's most likely involved in the mafia. If he's not a straight up gangster, he's probably um, associated with them uh, kind of on a fringe basis somehow. And um, you should not be contacting this guy any further. And, you know, why, he's gonna wonder why a bunch of guys with cameras are coming after him. Like he goes, I would cease and desist if I were you. And um, yeah, that was, that was really juicy. And it was a really good scene. Uh, however, we didn't put it in because there was so much, so much of the theme of this movie is tied to Will and his connection to his father. And um, that definitely separated the, the theme. It became more about 
Roman and the stamps, less about Will and like his, his personal story. So we decided to, to leave that out. Well, excellent job, gentlemen. Hey, congratulations once again for the documentary on the, the Penny Black. It's, it's been a pleasure uh, speaking to you about this, uh, this film. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for having us on. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.